thinking about picking up the new Apple HomePod, you may be wondering if it's a worthwhile investment or it's just a waste of your money. While the HomePod offers many innovative features and advanced technology, its price tag, to be completely honest with you, is a little bit scary. <laughs> but before you decide whether or not it would be a waste of money, it's important to take a closer look at the device features, benefits, and potential drawbacks. So let's spend a few minutes and ask, why is this back? Now the original HomePod came out in 2018 and it was a $350 Siri enabled smart speaker. It had a cable which couldn't come out. Looks familiar, but I get it. I'm not sure I understand. It's okay, you don't have to. And to be completely honest with you, this didn't really sound all that good in my opinion. And of course, it failed miserably. So I guess I was right. Well, Apple went back to the drawing board, kinda, and came out with this. $99, a much better price point. It can only be used on Apple products with its subpar smart feature. Sorry, Siri. And of course, the full-size HomePod just went away. We found out last month it's back. Slightly less blue, and uh, it's pretty much the exact same thing. It's a little mm, beefier, stouter, I don't know. The touch surface, it's like the whole, <laughs> sorry. The touch surface is just like the whole thing lights up now as opposed to like in the center. And of course now you've got a removable cord, which still can only be plugged in one way. So, okay, I, I can't get a longer cord for it. Now this has two new sensors put into it that allow it to detect temperature as well as humidity. That's kind of cool to work with your home smart stuff. So say for example, you've got your thermostat which is connected to the home and this can detect whether the temperature has gone up or gone down and it can send the message to your thermostat to say it need to turn the heat up or turn the air conditioning down a little bit and cool it off. So that's kind of cool. $300 cool? Now, this is a speaker first and foremost, right? Maybe? I guess that's really up to you. Now, compared to the original, which had the subwoofer on top, seven tweeters going around, and six microphones, the new one has the subwoofer still on top, five tweeters going around instead of seven, and four mics going around instead of six. Now we see why they were able to drop the price 50 bucks. I don't have the old one to compare it to, but I've been using this for a few days now, and it's okay. It can still only be used with an iPhone. There's no jack or anything to be able to plug in any other kind of device. The display on top is just literally when Siri talks or you have the white going on there to let you know that it's interacting. No time or anything on that and, you know, Siri. Which, like, if it's on a table, it, you really can't see it because flat. Probably like you folks, we've all used a ton of Bluetooth speakers. In my opinion, I've tried ones that sound the same, if not better than this speaker. I haven't tried a $300 competitor to see if it sounds any better, to be honest with you. I found the JBL for 300. I don't know, that they sound kind of good, but I like the ones that sounded really good that weren't $300. I don't know, it just, to me, it seems like once you hit a threshold of Bluetooth speakers, between that $300, $400 sweet spot, the sound kinda stays the same. What you're really paying for is the design and the build quality, which I totally get if you're looking for something that fits in a room. But to really get next level sound, it seems like there's that price, and then it just jumps to over $1,000. Now, let's stop for a second. Don't spend thousands of dollars on Bluetooth speakers. At that point, you're better off getting a legit sound system that is way better and probably less money. Maybe. You could spend a lot of money on that too. Now, this HomePod can be paired with another HomePod for something like your TV. So, $600 Bluetooth speakers. No, 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 stop. Don't get something like that because once again, there are other options for your TV that sound way better and are way cheaper or less expensive. Now I did pair this with the mini because I only had one of each 
and it, it sounded okay. Like I would go back and forth between each one and lower it and raise it. And you know, yes, little, little more full, kind of, little smaller sound, but it, it's good. It's, it, it's good. But I still think this is just okay. Good, good, okay. I, I just don't see a big enough difference. Now I am curious. How would two HomePod Minis sound together? Hold, hold on, hold that thought. Okay. Oh, jacket. Yay! We now have two HomePod Minis. So let's try this. And if these sound better than one HomePod 2, then, uh, Saved a hundred bucks and oh, Ugh. saved a hundred bucks and bye bye. Setup was super easy on this and uh oh, that sounds pretty good. Just for giggles, I am going to. Can I play? I have some music from a video from this video. No, this we can play. the intro. You just heard it. Those sound awesome. Now, let's take these off and let's put this. We'll see how it sounds. Like I said, just a little bit more bass, but in my opinion, this works. I also don't like that you can't use the EQ in the music settings because these speakers have computational audio to adjust to the surroundings. And to be completely honest with you, the EQ on the phone isn't that good either. It's just presets. Why can't Apple give us an app that allows you to control every aspect of the audio? No, Apple would rather tell you how you should listen. I, I never did, never could. I've had this speaker for, I don't know, 10 years. And yes, it's not as sleek as the HomePod 2, but in my opinion, it gets louder and has more bass and clean bass. I'm not talking that it's all brumbly and everything. It, it sounds really good, 70 bucks. That's not a home speaker, but I think it sounds really good. This came out in 2013. It's the UE Boom speaker. I got it right when it came out. So we're talking 10 years old, 150 bucks, and this sounds better than that. And I would dare say that maybe a little better than this. I, I didn't really compare them side by side, but they both sound good. And here's the thing that I really like about this. This has an app. And on that app, you have the ability to adjust the mids, the lows, the bass, the treble, but they also have presets. So you can adjust those. You cannot go wrong. I get it. It's not a smart speaker. But in reality, the thing is, a smart speaker does something for you and you can get ones for $99 and do what you need to do. If you really want to listen to music, these are not probably what you want to get. You, you get a lot more bang for your buck with these types of things. And these are nice because it's all in one and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, when it comes to this, I, I just don't think the value's there. It sounds okay, but these sound better. And for $300, it's just not worth it. 200 bucks, you're set if you want a smart speaker and they sound good. Now, if you wanna see what else Apple's trying to trick you into buying, check out this video right here. Of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell so you won't miss my next video. See ya. It's kinda, I have to like turn and go.